بن بنرحب طبعا بدكتور حنا سبات سبيكر في السيمينار النهارده دكتور حنا بي اتش دي يونيفرستي اوف بول سباتيه فرنسا وباحث في الريجنال سنتر فور سبيس ساينس اند تكنولوجي فور ويسترن ايجا دكتور حنا هيتكلم عن موديفايد نيوتونيان جرافيتي موديفايد نيوتونيان دايناميكس وازاي ان هي can be alternative لل uh, لل dark matter دكتور حنا تفضل ثانك يو شكرا لكم وانت بحب اشكر uh, قسم ال, او مركز الفيزياء الاساسيه في مدينه زويل uh, طبعا ماي توك ويل بي ان انجلش اند نخلي يعني at around the end of the session uh, we'll uh, open the discussions and questions. We'll accept uh, questions and discussions. So uh, let me just, just uh, use the full screen. Now, the first part of my talk concerns dark matter. Why uh, most scientists and most uh, astrophysicists and astronomers and cosmologists believe that a dark matter exists. So why we think that uh, dark matter exists? Of course, this, there has been a uh, sort of accumulating evidence for the existence of dark matter for more than 80 years, which happened, of course, shortly after the discovery of galaxies in the 1920s, in the uh, 1920s by Hubble. Uh, uh, Edwin Hubble discovered that there are islands of, of uh, uh, stars uh, separate from our own galaxy, the Milky Way. And uh, that's one important contribution uh, that Hubble did. Uh, to discover uh, those galaxies. And the second important contribution uh, by Hubble was to discover that some of these galaxies uh, suffer from a sort of redshift, which he explained that this redshift uh, is a result of uh, receding galaxies. That means that the universe is expanding. And he came up with the Hubble, we know, uh, Hubble law, uh, which all of you probably know. Now, if we uh, go to a later stage, I mean, in the 1960s, uh, by studying uh, what we call the rotational curves. What do you mean by that? Of course, uh, if we study how uh, galaxies rotate around their uh, galactic bulges or centers, if you want. So, in fact, we can do this using either orbital velocities of stars or uh, of gas. This can be done using spectral analysis using what we call the doppler fizeau effect, we can uh, estimate uh, the rotational velocity or the orbital velocities of stars and gas as a function of distance from the center of the galaxy. Of course, uh, what was accept expected uh, theoretically was once we are away from the central regime or the galactic bulge region where uh, most of the stars and gas uh, exist, uh, in fact, it was expect, expected that uh, the rotation speed or the orbital speed of gas and stars will uh, drop off uh, as a function of uh, distance. In fact, uh, according to the Keplerian velocity. We will get back to this point later on. So basically the dotted line or the dashed line corresponds to the theoretical uh, estimation, while the observations mostly followed uh, the solid line here. It's only a schematic diagram not an actual one, just to indicate uh, the idea. So uh, curve B represents what happens in reality observationally, that the curve, uh, the velocity outside the galactic bulge does not drop uh, down, but it remains almost constant. So uh, that was really astonishing uh, for, the, uh, for astronomers at that time on, on, on the reasons for this uh, behavior. So this rotation curve became flat at large distances. In fact, if you go to distances that are many times the, the order of magnitude of the galactic bulge, this uh, curve re will remain uh, constant or it's a sort of plateau. And at the end, we come, uh, we reach what we call the terminal velocity uh, uh, or the asymptotic velocity to be more precise. Now this is, the idea of, uh, here came the idea of dark matter. Uh, it was suggested here that in order to explain how this happens, there should be extra 
material, something that we cannot see, invisible matter, uh, that uh, will give rise to this discrepancy between uh, theoretical calculation and uh, observations. So, and uh, later works, for example, by Ostreicher, Peebles, and Yahel in 1974, uh, uh, hypothesized that there should be a sort of dark matter halo. That is, uh, dark matter exists as a sort of halo uh, at the outskirts of uh, or the outer regions of uh, spiral galaxies. Of course, here we are talking about spiral galaxies or disk galaxies because the behavior in uh, elliptical galaxies is a little bit different. In fact, dark matter does exist, uh, presumably, uh, in uh, elliptical galaxies to explain the, the, it has no rotation curve, it has dispersion velocities because it has no specific plane in the case of elliptical galaxies. But in, in the case of disk galaxies or spiral galaxies, of course, we may uh, estimate the radial velocity uh, or the uh, orbital velocity as a function of distance from the center. So, uh, uh, Ostreicher, Peebles, and Yahil came up with uh, this idea that there should be a dark matter halo, and this dark matter halo should be uh, larger in mass than the original mass of, or, or the visible mass of the galaxy. So it was an accepted uh, idea among astronomers and physicists and cosmologists that uh, dark matter halos exist in spiral galaxies and that they explain the observed uh, rotation curves of uh, these galaxies. Now, if we go to an earlier stage, Dark matter was suggested uh, and di directly after the discovery of uh, galaxies. Uh, this happened uh, in what we call the gala galaxy sun clusters, or galactic clusters. Now, what are these clusters? Uh, each galactic cluster or galaxy clusters consists from uh, about uh, 50 galaxies up to a thousand galaxies uh, that are uh, bound together by their own mutual gravity the force of gravity. Of course, Zwicky, Swiss uh, astronomer in 1933, was the first person to notice this phenomena in, in the coma, what we call the coma cluster. Here you can see an image of the coma cluster, uh, which consists of uh, many uh, galaxies bound together by gravity. And uh, of course, it's a highly uh, regular gravitationally bound system of thousands of galaxies. And this uh, coma cluster lies at around 100 megaparsecs from the Earth or from us here in the solar system. Now, here I should note that masses of galaxy clusters may be estimated in different ways. But there are many ways, among which uh, I, I mentioned. First of all, we may use the scatter and radial velocities of the galaxies within clusters. In fact, what Zwicky did after Hubble discovered that uh, uh, faraway galaxies, of course, not all galaxies, for example, uh, in the case of Andromeda galaxy, uh, which is the nearest large galaxy to the Milky Way, it, it doesn't suffer from a redshift, by the way. Why? Because we are talking about uh, a, a galaxy from the local group. In fact, our galaxy, the Milky Way, and uh, Andromeda galaxy are on a course on a, on a collision course. They're going to collide with each other within a few billion years from now. So not all galaxies, therefore, suffer from redshifts. So when uh, uh, Zwicky uh, studied uh, faraway galaxies to estimate the, the redshifts, he discovered that they do not all follow uh, the, the Hubble's law. The, which is a simple law, which says that the speed of recession equals the Hubble's constant times distance. In fact, when he studied those uh, galactic clusters or galaxy clusters, he discovered there is a scatter in radial velocities of such galaxies within uh, the, the cluster. So this is one way, using this these radial velocities, he was able to estimate the, the mass of the cluster. And uh, another method that was later used when especially, particularly when X-ray astronomy uh, came uh, into existence, uh, especially after uh, the advent of the space age, after 1957, of course, and when astronomers started uh, load, launching uh, X-ray satellites in orbit. So X-ray astronomy advanced uh, very rapidly. 
So while studying X-rays emitted by hot gas from the clusters, uh, uh, we may as, uh, use the X-ray uh, spectrum and their flux to, uh, in order to estimate the temperature and density. Hence, we get the pressure. And assuming that the pressure of the, uh, within this cluster and the gravity, they balance, so we may determine the mass profile of this galaxy cluster. And this is another way of estimating uh, the, the mass of the cluster. So, and, and anyhow, uh, uh, dark matter, it was found that dark matter outweighs the visible matter by approximately five to one in these clusters, which means there are five times more hidden matter or dark matter than observed, observable matter, five to one, approximately. This is the maximum uh, estimation. So this is another reason why we need uh, dark matter. The third uh, point here is uh, what we call gravitational lensing. Now in gravitational lensing, of course, if we use Einstein's general theory of relativity, it is found that masses, large masses especially, cause the bending of uh, space-time enough for light to be bent. You know, we, we teach students uh, at school and even at the university that uh, light uh, propagates in straight lines. Well, we know that this is only true in, in, in uh, Euclidean space, but uh, in curved space-time, this is no longer true. So uh, light is deflected. So when a light beam passes near a massive object, it will get deflected. And using this idea, uh, scientists came up with the idea of gravitational lens. Instead of using an optical lens, here we have a large mass between the observer, which is us, and the source behind it. And this causes a sort of gravitational lens. Now, the magnitude of the lensing effect gives an estimate of the intermediate lensing mass causing it. That's the idea. If we can measure how much uh, lensing happened or uh, curvature that occurred to, to light, then we may estimate the mass uh, between us and the light source. This is the basic idea. So, uh, this is a schematic diagram of uh, what I'm talking about here. Assume this is the Earth or the observer. Here we have a certain galaxy. Let's say it's galaxy number two. And here we have a massive galaxy, galaxy number one, which acts as a gravitational lens. So light bends in, the, in, in such a way that we, the, the actual uh, location of the original uh, galaxy, we may, we may say it as one image or multiple images, it might be magnified or it might be, there might be two images or even four, as you can see in this case, four images of the same object in the background. Or we, it may reach up to what we call an Einstein ring. In any case, uh, uh, it was found that by comparing what is observed in this galaxy, the lensing galaxy, and the mass causing this sort of lensing, it was found that there is more mass um, in this galaxy than what we can see. Therefore, the solution here also is to invoke dark matter. So that's the third reason for which we need dark matter. Now, by studying, <coughs> sorry, by studying the cosmic microwave background radiation, which is the relic radiation that uh, came out at around 380,000 years after the Big Bang, when uh, uh, matter cooled enough and uh, became transparent. Why? Because electrons before that, uh, the universe was too hot so that all matter was ionized and uh, uh, light, not just light, all forms of radiation, electromagnetic radiation was not free to propagate in space. It always collided and interacted with particles such as electrons. So once the universe cooled enough after 380,000 years after the Big Bang, uh, electrons uh, were bound uh, to uh, atoms and the universe became transparent and all of this radiation uh, was free to move. Of course, now at uh, around uh, 13 billion years later, which is now, uh, uh, we observe uh, this radiation in the realm of uh, uh, microwaves. That's why we call it the cosmic, cosmic microwave background radiation. And when COBE, the Cosmic Background Explorer was first launched, and I think it was back in 1992, if I'm not mistaken. 
it wasn't able to, uh, to find uh, these discrepancies in this radiation that will may give rise later on, which are, which are density fluctuations actually, which may give rise later on to structure in the universe. He found that it, the universe was so smooth or this radiation was so smooth. So later on, uh, newer studies and later on when uh, Planck and other uh, uh, satellites were launched, they were able to detect these uh, small discrepancies in the radiation. Now, this background here, it's of course the, the, the average temperature of this radiation is around 2.7 kelvins. So it's very, very cold, very close to the absolute zero. But we can see here that these uh, points correspond to discrepancies below or above the average temperature. So uh, by studying these, well, it's a very tough way to study it statistically. Uh, uh, we came up what, with what uh, scientists call the power spectrum of the cosmic microwave background radiation. Now there's more one, than one way to study this power spectrum. In fact, what, we, what they do, they study the angular separation between two points or the size of these uh, uh, cells we can see here. Uh, which is uh, an angular uh, distance. And then uh, they estimate its intensity. And they came up with this uh, graph, which, is, uh, which we call the power spectrum of the cosmic microwave background radiation. Now, let's see that the, uh, this uh, angular power spectrum represents the two point correlation function of temperature fluctuations in momentum space on the sky as a function of angular separation. Of course, uh, this is uh, thanks to data by NASA's WMAP uh, science team. Now the solid line, the solid line you can see here, which fits the data is the best fit according to the Lambda CDM model. Of course, the Lambda CDM model, I'm not going to talk about it. It's the, uh, uh, let's say uh, the standard model now of uh, cosmology, which includes not just dark matter, of course we have matter and dark matter and the cosmological constant or let's say the, the dark energy. So we it includes the lambda in this case. So this is now the canonical model of uh, the universe. Now using this model, we they came up with this best fit for the data. And uh, at, uh, okay. Now, what I wanted to say here is that you can see here that the second and third, we have not just the first peak, we have the second and third peaks. Now, the relative height of the second to third peaks, or the acoustic peaks, they depend actually on the amount of dark matter invoked into the model. So the conclusion here is that cosmologies with dark matter, such as the lambda CDM, are the only ones to correctly simulate this power spectrum. So we have no choice but to include dark matter to uh, fit the observed data of the lamp of uh, sorry of uh, the cosmic microwave background radiation. Now uh, I may add there is so much evidence. Uh, I mean, at, at least for the majority of uh, astronomers and astrophysicists and cosmologists, there is so much evidence, compelling evidence for the existence of dark matter. I'm just exposing this evidence. A five, fifth point here is the large scale structure in the universe. Now, we know that the universe, where we talked about uh, galaxies and clusters of galaxies and on larger scales. Of course, to have an idea, a, a typical galaxy is around 100,000 light years in diameter or a little bit more, like our galaxy, the Milky Way. When we speak about distances within the same uh, cluster of galaxies, we are talking about a few tens of millions of light years. And then if we go to uh, larger scales, hundreds of uh, millions of light years, billions of millions of light years, we get to the scale of uh, not just clusters of galaxies, but also uh, uh, super clusters. And then we go to the uh, domain of filaments uh, that connect uh, multiple uh, super clusters together. Of course, the structure of the universe is a bit uh, complex. Uh, there's a much debate. There's nowadays much debate about uh, why do we have uh, such uh, structure in the universe and the large scale structure of the universe. In any case, now models uh, that cosmologists uh, do for uh, this these large scale structure of the universe, they have to invoke also dark matter in order to get what we observe. 
So it's a sort of, uh, you know, we, uh, they, they try uh, many, uh, let's say, many ingredients. Let's say we had uh, put the, this amount of this percentage of dark matter, this percentage of normal matter, and this percentage of uh, dark energy, and we get the recipe. Of course, we know that uh, nowadays it's accepted that, it's acceptable that around 70%, I'm talking approximately 70% of the total mass of the universe is in the form of dark energy. Dark energy, just to say a few words about it, it's the reason why the universe is accelerating. Uh, I mean, the, the galaxies are not, uh, or the universe is not expanding and slowing down, but accelerating. The, 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 uh, that was discovered back in 1998. And that, that's why they ha had to invoke this component, which is the dark energy. I'm not going to talk about it more today, but uh, dark matter was known, as you can see, since the 1930s. So we have around 70% dark energy, around 25% uh, dark matter, and the rest, 5% is uh, the, the, or the normal matter, the observable matter, or sometimes the what we call the baryonic matter. Uh, uh, in fact, even the, the material uh, the, of which we consist, I mean, uh, the solids on Earth, uh, planets, stars, it's even a fraction of this 5%, because most of the 5% is in the, in the form of tenuous gas, between in between uh, the interstellar gas or between the, the galaxies, intergalactic gas and so forth. So it's amazing that what we see is only a very small fraction, a tiny fraction of what exists. If of course, the, these uh, ideas about dark matter and dark energy are correct, of course, because finally this may not be correct. Uh, I mean, there could be an, an, an alternative, alternative solution. Now, uh, one of the probably most compelling or direct evidence of, for the existence of uh, dark matter came from the coma cluster. And uh, in fact, what happened is uh, this uh, image was taken, of course, uh, the, uh, the, sorry, I said coma cluster, it should be the, the bullet cluster. Now, uh, the bullet cluster, here we have two galactic clusters or galactic clusters that have collided, they have collided and pass through each other. Now, what you can see in this image, the white dots show where the galaxies are. And the cloudy region shows the X-ray image of the same region, highlighting where the gas is. So most of the visible mass exists in the gas gaseous uh, area, you can see here. Uh, now we have the two X's right here. Now the two white X's show where the center of mass is for the two passing galaxies. So most of the mass of the galaxies is in a different place to where the visible mass is. That's the amazing thing, that the, what we observe as visible mass is does not coincide with the invisible, resulting from uh, dancing and so forth. So this was used as a strong evidence for the existence of dark matter because dark matter, uh, the, most of the mass exists where dark matter exists, but the observed mass has less mass than uh, it should have. So this was uh, at many times used to, to say, oh, this is direct evidence for the existence of dark matter. So the generally accepted properties of dark matter, we may summarize them as follows. First of all, dark matter does not emit nor absorb any form of electromagnetic radiation, any form of light or infrared or X-rays, gamma rays, etc. Does not interact uh, with uh, radiation. Uh, does not emit or absorb. Uh, or absorb. Um, second point, it mainly interacts with matter or with itself. That's important. Uh, uh, it's the, the only way it interacts with the matter, normal matter or baryonic matter, or with itself is using gravitational interaction. That means uh, it has probably no nuclear force, uh, strong or weak, no electromagnetic uh, force or interaction, only it's the gravitation that affects it. And third point here is that the density, its density varies with its inverse volume. Well, we know that the average density of any region of space is, is we simply divide the mass inside this region within uh, over uh, the, the volume. So it might not be new, uh, one might say, but no, uh, because if you think about it in the following way. If we take radiation, for example, uh, for example, uh, let's take the, the cosmic uh, background radiation itself. Uh, when it uh, was emitted uh, some uh, 13 billion years ago, 
it will used to be uh, much ener more en energetic, probably in the uh, domain of X-rays. Now, with, with, the, with the expansion of the universe, it reached uh, uh, the, the microwaves uh, region. So that means that simply in the case of radiation, we cannot simply just divide uh, the mass by uh, the volume because uh, the radiation itself expands. So uh, what, what, what uh, it is assumed about uh, the properties of dark matter as, as it is accepted generally is that it is similar to normal matter in the sense that its density is inverse to its volume. So these, these are some of the main features of the accepted uh, properties of dark matter. So <laughs> now the question comes back again, what is dark matter after all? So uh, at, at the outset, it was assumed that dark matter is normal baryonic matter. Okay, we know that baryons and uh, leptons and all the stuff that described by the standard model uh, cannot be dark matter for the simple reason that they should interact, interact using uh, ele the electromagnetic interaction or the uh, weak and nuclear uh, forces, et cetera, interactions. So it could not be uh, normal baryonic matter. That's one thing. Uh, yeah, we, I have said this, uh, the, the interaction with the electromagnetic radiation. And uh, for some time, it was suggested that neutrinos, which is part of the standard model, like might be the uh, highly seek dark matter. But uh, uh, when uh, models were used and simulations, uh, it was found that they do not clump quickly enough. So this uh, ruled out that neutrinos uh, was the uh, seek, uh, long seek dark matter. And another idea was that the could be compact objects. Compact objects are the endpoints of uh, stars, like uh, uh, black holes. Also, some suggestions some suggest that we have might have strange stars. Like uh, uh, instead of having uh, the neutron pressure uh, in the case of neutron stars, or the electron pressure in the case of, of white dwarfs, there could be the, the quark pressure that uh, prevents further collapse of uh, these stellar endpoints. So strange stars uh, were suggested also, brown dwarfs, which are failed stars. And uh, the problem is that later studies uh, suggested that these compact objects do not fit. They do not explain the dark matter or what we observe. Why? Uh, for the simple reason that they should form too many gravitational lenses. We don't observe as much gravitational lenses if dark matter was indeed in the form of black holes, strange stars, brown dwarfs, and so forth. So, now the solution, <laughs> what, is, what does dark matter consist of? Of course, this is not the topic of my lecture here, but we, we have to go to things beyond the standard model, like uh, let's say the theories of supersymmetry and uh, supersymmetric particles or uh, axions or whatever. So, but I want just to emphasize that all studies without any exception so far came up with nothing all studies from particle physics weren't, to, weren't able to prove the existence of any uh, viable uh, dark matter candidate up to date, uh, at least up to last month, <laughs> I tried to search. So basically, uh, we don't know what dark matter, if it exists, the, what, is, what, it is, what is it made of. Now let's come with some problems with dark matter. Now, First of all, we have what we call the Tully-Fisher relationship. Now, the Tully-Fisher relationship it, it correlates uh, the luminosity, the absolute luminosity of uh, the, uh, or absolute magnitude, if you want, or the luminosity of a galaxy with its uh, rotational velocity. In fact, uh, the, the correlation says that the L, the luminosity, is proportional to V power four. The V or the velocity we are talking about is uh, the asymptotic velocity, which is the velocity of the disk at the, uh, very far away from the galactic bulge. So the, the, uh, the cl classical uh, dark matter uh, ideas weren't able to give us a sufficient explanation of this uh, relationship, the Tully Fisher relationship. And there is also an equivalent to the Tully Fisher uh, relationship, which is the, uh, they say, the baryonic Tully Fisher relationship, 
which relates also uh, the, the, the mass to the velocity, not just, uh, sorry, the, the mass to velocity, yes, not just uh, the luminosity to uh, the velocity. Another problem that came up with uh, simulations, of course, now uh, in theoretical astrophysics, we always, uh, astrophysicists always uh, resort to simulations. This is the best way to, in order to compare what, what, uh, the, the calculations to observations. Now they came up with uh, what is called the core cusp problem. Now uh, it was found that models of dark matter uh, indicated that at the galactic center, they should have high density peaks of dark matter. Uh, but this does not, uh, uh, this is not compatible or does not fit the observed data. We do not have such uh, peaks at the, uh, or the, uh, our cusps at the core. That's why, uh, but in the, in the literature, this problem is known as the core cusp problem. So this is one, uh, another problem to dark matter. Of course, when I say a problem, I mean, majority of papers cannot resolve it, but occasionally you may find one paper here and there, which says, well, I, I found a solution to this problem or that one, but I'm speaking about what is acceptable in general, generally acceptable among astrophysicists. Uh, also, dark matter simulations predict the existence of more dwar uh, dwarf galaxies than observed. Dwarf galaxies, of course, have much less matter or uh, stars than uh, classical galaxies uh, like uh, our Milky Way. Our Milky Way galaxy uh, has at least 10 to the power of 11 uh, stars. This is the order of magnitude. Some galaxies uh, like ours may, uh, may, may reach up to 10 to the power of 12 or 1 trillion stars. But in the ca case of uh, uh, dwarf galaxies, it's much less. It's around 10 to the power of 10, uh, give or take, uh, of stars. So they, have, uh, uh, they are much less massive. Now, uh, dark matter simulations, they predict that there are more dwarf galaxies than we observe. But that's also a failure to the dark matter uh, assumption or theory. A fourth point uh, about the shortcomings or problems with dark matter is that also dark matter simulations predict that uh, less satellite galaxies are aligned in place of their host galaxies than observed. Now, this point means that it was found that in many cases, there are satellite galaxies, small galaxies that uh, orbit a larger galaxy. For example, in the case of the Milky Way, we have the two Magellanic clouds that orbit our galaxy and they are also in a collision course with ours, but they are small, no need to worry. So, um, uh, the dark matter, matter simulations, they predicted that we have less, uh, yeah, I haven't uh, continued the idea, that these uh, satellite galaxies, they were often found to, be, to lie in the same galactic plane, why we do not know. Now, dark matter simulations predicted that less satellite galaxies are aligned in the planes. That's another failure, failure for uh, the dark matter uh, theory. Of course, there are other things. Of course, uh, I don't want to talk about uh, philosophy, but even personally, I have a problem. If I may, uh, uh, if I may talk about this for a moment, that if we think that ninety-five percent of our universe is dark, in the form of dark energy and dark matter, while uh, no more than five percent is uh, the observable matter or uh, the matter uh, which we think we understand and for which we have formulated theories like uh, uh, the quantum field theory and uh, general relativity and so forth, these big theories in physics. They are based on no more than 5% of what exists in the universe. But I find this uh, rather annoying because uh, how can we know if that the, the these 95% uh, total mass of the universe, if it exists, uh, how do we know that it follows this uh, the, the laws based on the five percent? What I mean, I mean, can we really generalize the laws of the five percent to the ninety-five percent? So I think this represents a, a rather philosophical problem to me. Anyhow, that's why I, I was among the persons who seeked uh, an alter alternative solutions to dark matter. So I'm going to start with uh, the classical modified Newtonian dynamics, or what is known as as mond in short. Now, this is thanks to uh, Mordechai Milgram uh, in a paper published in 1983, that means uh, around uh, almost 50 years ago, entitled A Modification of the Newtonian Dynamics as a Possible Alternative to the Hidden Mass Hypothesis. Uh, in fact, 
he uh, published three uh, papers on the same subject in the same year, 1983, which became the classical uh, references in the field. Now, his idea, the idea is basically the following. Now, we know that uh, Newton's second law uh, says that F equals ma, the force equals the mass times the acceleration of the object. Uh, now, he introduced a factor mu, factor mu, which is a function of the acceleration uh, or the relative acceleration between a, uh, the relative acceleration between a and a naught. A naught is a constant or a critical acceleration. So he said that if I introduce this factor mu into the Newton's second law, which is simply m times a. Now, if the ratio a over a naught, which he denoted by x, if this ratio is so much bigger than one, than unity, it means the factor mu is equal to one. And when the factor is equal to one, we turn back to F equals MA, which is the Newtonian regime, which means we may apply Newtonian mechanics. But while if X, the ratio A over A naught, over a naught or X is much less than one, or unity, this means that mu, the function mu, comes equal to x itself, which is a over a naught. In this case, we are in the regime, uh, the Mond regime, and we are not in the Newtonian, no longer in the Newtonian regime, but we are in the Mondian regime, or the modified Newtonian regime. Now, um, this is the, his basic idea. So let's compare the Newtonian dynamic, dynamics versus the Mondian dynamics. In Newtonian dynamics, we have uh, the potential given as negative, uh, of course, the gravitational potential, I mean, given as negative gm over r. And if we want to uh, estimate the acceleration, uh, of course, the acceleration of any object is simply the force. The in, the case, in this case, we are talking about the gravitational force divided by the inertial mass of the object. So, uh, so we will get, uh, using, uh, of course, uh, this potential, we get uh, A equals GM divided by R squared. And if uh, the gravitation is the only force causing this circular motion of the star or the gas around the galactic sector, then the, the acceleration, we have the centripetal acceleration is simply V squared over R. So this, this means that GM over R squared is equals V squared over R, from which we may get the V is simply GM by r at the square root of gm by r, which was which we call, of course, the Keplerian speed. Why? Because it is uh, the v or the velocity. I mean, the further you go, we see that the velocity, the orbital velocity or rotation uh, curve in this case, is proportional to the square root of one over r. Okay, because gm, of course, are constants uh, for a given mass. So we have a declining velocity. That's what that was what expected expected in galaxies. Actually, uh, it was uh, the same behavior that we find, for instance, in the solar system. We know that planets follow this law. Uh, the orbital speed of a planet follows this law. Of course, we are talking about the average speed because if you want to be precise, we have uh, elliptical uh, uh, orbits. But in, in, on the average, it follows this law. Now, if we take a look at the Mondian regime. The omega or the gravitational potential is a bit more complex. It's the square root of A naught GM. A naught, I remind you, is a critical uh, acceleration. It's a constant nature, according to Milgram. It's a constant of nature called A naught. Or, so it's uh, the square root of A naught GM, logarithm, natural logarithm of R over GM. Of course, if you take the uh, differentiation with respect to R, you get the force in this case. And from the force, you may estimate the acceleration because F over M, the acceleration in, in, in this case is simply square root of A naught GM divided by R. And if you, this is the only force that is causing uh, the, the centripetal acceleration in this galaxy. So it should be equal to V squared over R, which is the centripetal acceleration. And you, we may not directly hear that R and R cancel out so that V remains constant after a certain distance from the galactic center, which is the Mondian distance on the modified Newtonian uh, re regime. Now, if you uh, uh, square both sides of the equation, you get V 
uh, sorry, if you take the square root of the equation, you, you, say you get B equals A naught GM to the power one fourth. And this is almost compatible with, uh, if you take it the other way around, I mean, if you raise it to the power four, you see that the mass is proportional to the B to the power four, which is compatible with the Tully-Fisher relationship, assuming that the mass and luminosity are uh, directly proportional. And this, in fact, to me, I think there is a problem with that also, because why should the mass and the luminosity be uh, proportional to, to each other in galaxies? But that's another question I'm not going to discuss in this talk. <clears throat> so simply using this modification, we get uh, the flat rotation curves that we observe uh, in this galaxies or spiral galaxies. Now, here are some remarks about MOND. Now, the effects of MOND become significant below a critical acceleration, A0. This critical acceleration was found to be of the order of magnitude of 10 to the power of minus 10 meters per square seconds. That's one thing. <clears throat> now, another problem uh, with, with MOND is that MOND needs an interpolation function. It's the uh, translation between the Newtonian regime and the Mondian regime. Uh, of course, there are different uh, laws uh, assumed, but none of them uh, is for sure the correct law. We don't know how to uh, transition from uh, the classical Newtonian uh, regime to uh, the Mondian regime. And I remind you that here that according to uh, the original Mond idea, to Milgram's idea, that this regime is not a, a scale uh, or a distance regime, but an acceleration regime. I mean, if the accelerations are reduced to this order of magnitude, then to the power of 10 minus 10 meters per square second, then uh, the effects of MOND will come into play. <clears throat> now, uh, another uh, issue about MOND is that it is a non-relativistic theory. Uh, we know that uh, Newtonian dynamics, they are a limiting case of uh, Einstein's general theory of relativity. We know that. Uh, but uh, in the case of MOND, which is a non-relativistic uh, theory or model, uh, it has uh, it needs a relativistic generalization. Of course, of course, there has been some attempts. Uh, for example, I remember uh, I forgot the name of the author. Uh, it's called uh, scalar tensor uh, vector uh, theory, which is uh, presumably a relativistic generalization of uh, MOND's idea. But I, uh, so we need in basically a theory of modified gravity, a more general theory of modified gravity that includes uh, relativistic effects and so forth. Or if I want to be more optimistic, we may need a quantum gravity theory, uh, a theory that includes the, uh, the quantum theory of gravity that includes uh, Mond, uh, the Mondian effects or the, the Mond as, as a limiting case. So of course there are many ideas in the market, I dare say, but nobody knows what essentially is the correct theory so far, because any correct theory, uh, be it a modified gravity or quantum gravity, should uh, give us uh, some uh, predictions, specific predictions that are testable. Uh, okay, it's not enough just to reproduce what uh, general relativity produces. Uh, this, the, the, there will be no distinction between the two. We need specific uh, prediction that contradicts, for example, uh, general relativity, which we know that so far nothing no, no phenomenon, as far as I know, uh, has has violated uh, general relativity. So I think this is a rather very complex issue. And one more thing, which is strange, is that it could be a coincidence, by the way. It was found even in, in Milgram's original papers that the value of the critical acceleration is of the order of magnitude of the speed of light times the Hubble constant. So if we multiply C, the speed of light in vacuum times the Hubble constant, we get A naught approximately. Why we do not know uh, the region, but this is he he interpreted it as a sort of the, the interplay between the microscopic and the macroscopic, the cosmological and the local. Anyhow, and uh, I don't know if I have much time. How much time do I have? Uh, Uh, you have around uh, 10 more minutes, but you can, uh, you can okay. go on. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Now I'm going to show you uh, 
uh, my attempt in, in MUND. Uh, of course, uh, this work is a collab collaboration between my student, uh, Raed uh, Bani Abdo, and uh, uh, a colleague of mine at Mota University, uh, Professor Marwan uh, Musa. Now, the idea, I'm going just to read you the abstract. This paper was accepted for publishing in the Jordan Journal of Physics, JGP. It will appear in early 2023. Now, I'm going just to read you the abstract and then I'll explain more about this. Uh, we have resorted to a modified form of modified Newtonian dynamics or MOD to account for galactic rotation curves, which is uh, as a possible solution or alternative for dark matter uh, paradigm. Now, we did that by assuming that now, either the gravitational constant G is a function of distance or scale, which means G is varies locally, it's uh, G that we know, 6.67 .6 times 10 to the power of um, negative 11, et cetera, as I units. But if we go to a very large scale, it starts to deviate. Of course, this is a phenomenological model, by the way. I mean, we gave no theoretical explanation why this, this is the case. We would, what we want is just to try to fit the data and to extend Mond's uh, regime. Because Mond uh, failed, probably I should have added this point, uh, Mond's model it does not work uh, on larger scales of scales rather than galaxies, for example, uh, gal galaxy clusters and the large scale structure of the universe, etc. Although there have been some attempts to uh, solve the problem, but I'm speaking generally. So we came up with this idea to make G variable, scale dependent. Of course, uh, the, many theoretical physicists, uh, I mean, I have some friends that are theoretical physicists, didn't like the idea, but we, we have to try something just to, to see what, what if, it's, it's a sort of what if question. Now, one, another uh, solution possible, I mean, this is the first suggested solution to make G variable scale dependent. Another solution or probable solution, of course, is to make the gravitational to inertial mass ratio also a uh, function of distance scale. Of course, uh, we know that uh, um, gravitational mass and uh, inertial mass are totally equivalent. So it has been proven experimentally up to the power of 10 to the power of minus 12, or I don't remember exactly. Uh, on, the, on Earth, of course, or in the solar system, they are totally equivalent. I mean by gravitational mass here, that, that the mass that is included in Newton's uh, law of gravity while the uh, inertial mass is the mass uh, we use in, in Newton's second law of motion. Now, in general relativity, they are totally equivalent, even before that, maybe since uh, Galileo's time. Anyhow, but this is a basic tenet of general relativity that the two masses are equivalent. Now, the idea that we came up with, why should they always be so? Okay, on small distance scales, they are totally equivalent, but on larger scales, probably, I said, probably they are not equivalent. They are, they become, uh, they start deviating. Now, in order to, to do this, we have uh, used a linear approximation of each function. Since we do not know how G varies with distance or how the ratio uh, Mg over Mi, which is the ratio of gravitation to inertial mass, how they, var how, uh, they vary on larger scales. So we have used a sort of Taylor series expansion and took the first uh, two terms in each case, which is a linearized form of the function. And so what happened? So we have concluded that our model gives a qualitatively and quantitatively, quantitatively acceptable behavior of the galactic rotation curves for values of those parameters. If we use, for example, uh, for, uh, what I mean here is G of R, the, the function, the gravitational constant as a function of R, equals, I made it equal to G naught, which is G naught in, in this context is the uh, classical uh, gravitational constant. So G of R is G naught plus G one R. It's a linear form, linearized form. So G one, G naught, we know it. Huh? And G one, it was found to lie somewhere between 10 to the power of 31 to the power 10 to the power of minus 30. Of course, these are the units of this constant. While if I use uh, the other idea, I, 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 I want to assure you that these two ideas are separate from each other. So either we use this or that. If I use this MI, MG over MI ratio as a, fun uh, with, uh, that's a functional dependence on distance, 
then, then I will express it as one plus K one R or C one R one plus C one R. Well, of course, on small in small uh, distance scales, since C one is very small, so M one MG over M M one uh, MG over M I is equal to one. That means they are both equivalent. But on larger scales, when the distance is very large, they start deviating. That's the idea. So C one, the value of C one. In this case, it should be it should fall somewhere between ten to the power twenty one to ten to the power of, uh, sorry ten to the power of minus twenty one. Wait, I think here, yeah, uh, uh, ten to the power of minus twenty one to the ten to the power of minus twenty per meter. Of course, the inverse of it gives you the distance. That means uh, the there is a crystal critical distance we found. There is a critical distance of the order of magnitude of ten to the power of twenty one or to ten. Uh, 10 to the power of 20 meters, which is of course around 10,000 light years from the galactic sun. So let me go on with the abstract. Our model also may imply the existence of the critical distance at which the mod effects become significant rather than a critical acceleration. So we uh, here, we, uh, this model disagree, agrees with uh, Milgram's one. It's a uh, critical distance, the effect, uh, the, this effect, uh, uh, there is a critical distance where uh, this effect becomes clear rather than a, a critical acceleration. Furthermore, assuming that the centripetal acceleration in our model is equivalent to that in Milgram's, Milgram's mod, which is the A naught, we estimated the critical uh, critical centripetal acceleration. If it is the same as um, Milgram's mod, we found that A naught is not a constant. Milgram's mod is uh, acceleration is not a constant, but a linear function of the galactic baryonic mass. A naught in this case will be g one squared times the mass divided by G naught, where G1 is the new uh, uh, constant from the expansion of the function, and G naught is the gravitational constant, the classical gravitational constant uh, we know. And we were able to read the Milgram's version of Mond using this assumption. So I don't want to get into details, but uh, the idea here is to use, instead of Mg and Mi, uh, they, instead of canceling them out, they sh ha should have a functional dependence. Or another uh, uh, possibility is that g is a function of distance or scale, g of gr. Now, so basically, I assume that g of r has a certain functional dependence, g naught plus g one r plus half g q r squared, etc. And we took only the first two terms, uh, linearized terms, and we inserted them into the equation of uh, gravitational force, and we equated them with uh, uh, centripetal uh, force, and we got this equation, which includes the classical regime and the new modified regime. Of course, at when distances are so small, this term is much larger than the right term. The left term is much larger than the right term, and of course, we get to the classical Newtonian uh, regime. But at very large distances, uh, th this distance, as I said, it's uh, r equals uh, 10 to the power 20 or larger, then uh, this, the right term will uh, dominate and the left term will become negligible. And we are in the new regime, the modified regime. So this is the basic idea. <laughs> and uh, using this, these ideas, we came up with the critical distance, even in the case of uh, uh, the uh, varying gravitational constant, there is a critical distance, which is compatible with the critical distance and the, the other uh, assumption using the mg over m uh, i. And uh, here we came up that there is should also be a, an asymptotic velocity at very large distances, which is a constant. Of course, some might say, but this might violate uh, the laws of uh, what we call uh, conservation of energy. Well, of course, this is only a transitory period, the transitory regime, because later on there should be the effect of the other constants. It's a it's a Taylor series expansion because we do not know uh, the exact values of uh, these terms. Uh, see, we need so many observations. So this is this study is still a, a starting point. We need so much time to continue it. I, I, it might work and it might not, by the way. But so far, it has given uh, good uh, results. Let's say. Now, this is our way to link the critical uh, acceleration in our model with uh, the Mondian uh, critical acceleration, uh, the 
which is milligrams month. And we found here that the critical acceleration equals G1 squared divided by G0 times the, the uh, baryonic mass of the galaxy or the galactic center. Now, this way we were able to link it with milligrams month. And I'm going just to walk a little bit faster. And we finally get this, we got this equation, that, which means we have re re-derived Milgram's uh, assumption, which is uh, AC squared divided by, which is, here we have the acceleration, the uh, acceleration of uh, the rotating uh, stars, for example. So, so the acceleration squared divided by A naught, the critical acceleration, in the case of a month, equals G naught MB over R squared. So we derived it using our assumption. So it is compatible with Milgram's bond, but on one condition that we have assumed that A naught is a function, A naught or the critical acceleration is a function of mass, not a constant. And we, of course, we have done some simulations to compare the Newtonian regime with the modified regime. Uh, so basically this is the idea. Now, let me come to the conclusions. Of course, we need more observations, both in the case of, uh, galaxy, uh, of normal galaxies and the, in the case of galaxy clusters uh, to compare uh, these models uh, with the observations. We need also a theoretical framework for MOND, be it the classical MOND or Milgram's MOND or uh, the new uh, MOND uh, model we are suggesting. Uh, we still don't have a theoretical framework for that. And we need more experiments uh, as well from the domain of particle physics, because so far we cannot rule out that dark matter exists, although it has some problems, but MUND also has some problems. So that means uh, if you look at the big, the big picture, uh, MUND gives you a good, very good fit to at the galactic scale to galaxies to rotational curves of galaxies, whereas uh, 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 dark matter gives you better fits for larger scales and for uh, the cosmological regime and the cosmic background radiation. So we need more experiments also. And here, some might think of, can we or could there be a sort of high, a hybrid theory? What do we mean by hybrid theory? That both are correct. That Dark matter exists, and uh, uh, modified Newtonian dynamic uh, dynamics exist. How come? How can can both be compatible? To my own amazement, I learned this recently. Although this uh, paper appeared in 2015, but I wasn't uh, aware uh, about it. But thanks to Sabine Hassenfelder, she mentioned it in a lecture uh, a while ago. That uh, it's by Lasha Bereziani and Justin Fury. Uh, it's called the theory of dark matter superfluidity. This uh, theory combines both ideas that uh, dark matter is in a form of superfluid, where in the, in the domain of galaxies, it behaves as an extra force, as an extra force to gravity. And therefore, we have to modify uh, gravity at this scale, whereas at uh, larger scales, uh, it behaves differently. It enters a new phase uh, as a superfluid. And it mimics the effect of uh, dark matter that we see uh, observation. This is an interesting paper uh, that uh, needs uh, also more uh, studies and uh, more clarifications. Thank you for your listening. And uh, uh, now is the time for any, if you have any questions or uh, discussions. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Dr. Unmute your uh, your microphone and go ahead. I should go ahead. Ana rafa idi muad. Ana rafa idi Dr. Hanna, for this nice uh, discussion, uh, nice talk and discussion. Um, <laughs> أنا شايف كل الناس موجودة عرب فيعني كنت ممكن أتكلم عربي على الإنجليزي زي ما أنت عايز أنا 
I, I have no problem also to speak in Arabic or English. يعني أنا عندي عندي بعض التعليقات البسيطة وسؤال في الآخر. بالنسبة للدارك ماتر problem أولا في الدارك ماتر يعني عادة بنعدد يعني a lot of motivation علشان نبرر وجود الدارك ماتر زي ما أنت ذكرت ال الروتيشنال كيرفز الجرافيتيشنال لينزنج انت عارف لارج سكيل ستراكشر السيموليشن اساسا بتاع الجالاكسيز زي ما انا فاهم من بتوع الاسترو فيزكس if you try to do it without dark matter you will not get this uh, structures and the, the w map results and so on is not really compatible without dark matter So all of this gives a hint that dark matter may be something uh, realistic. Uh, hint is still we cannot claim it is uh, there unless really, really we discover it and uh, directly or indirectly. But when we go for another alternative like the one you mentioned or MOND, we focused essentially on rotational curves. What about the other, uh, about the other areas? Very, very good question. May I, may I, yeah, we can go step by step, please, go ahead. Ah, هذا that's a very good question. يعني هي اللي حصل إن بسبب ال يعني I what I believe the norm stagnation في الموضوع الموند إن يعني نجحت بالنجاح باهر في مستوى الجالكسي وما نجحت بعدين. طبعا في محاولات في ناس حاولوا أكيد يعني بس مش لساتها مقبولة بشكل عام. حاولت فكرت انا هون انه طبعا مع طالبي ومع زميلي دكتور مروان موسى انه ليش ما نحاول نعملها ناخذ ستيب بيوند بس عشان ناخذ هاي الستيب اللي ما بعد الجالكسي كان لابد انه وحده من البيسك عشان اسامبشنز في الموند نعدل عليها اللي هي الاي نوت انه الاي نوت تصير فاريبل طيب هلا هاي هي موضوع ديبيت على فكره حتى الاي نوت للعلم في تجارب انعملت اكسبيرمنتس على الارض حاولوا دخلوا بريجيمز اوف فيري لو اكسلريشنز اند ذي فاوند نو ديفيشن فروم نيوتونيان داينامكس هاي وحده طبعا هاي وحده قد تطعن بقدره الموند يعني انه انت عم تحكي عن وصلت وصلنا وعندي هلا يعني هاي بيبرز انا اشرت لها بالبحث يعني ف طب كيف ممكن انه ندخل اكسبيرمنت اللي بالفيري لو اكسلريشنز اللي هي المفروض مونديان ريجيم وما نحصل على ديفيشن من نيوتونيان داينامكس عشان كانت الفكره انه ممكن انها تكون المونديان افكتس مش ريليتد لاكسلريشن وانما ريليتد لسكيل مع انه الموضوع لو تقرا اي كتاب حول دارك ماتر اول شيء بيحكوا له اتس نوت ريليتد تو سكيل اذا بدنا نحكي عن موديفايد نيوتونيان داينامكس اتس نوت ريليتد تو سكيل اور ديستنس ات از ريليتد تو اكسلريشن لانه هاي كلها يعني عم بيتبعوا اللي حكى مرجحي ميلجروم آه بس آه في الحقيقه لا احنا م... آه فهلا هاي الخطوه اللي عملناها هي لسه بده يتبعها خطوات ثانيه انه بدنا ندخل في الديستنس سكيلز اللي هي ما بعد الجالكسي في ستار كلاسترز ونجرب نشوف هاو كومباتيبل ات از وذ اور اسامبشن او الموديل عندها اذا اف سكسسفول هلا اف نوت سكسسفول خلص يعني ذس ايديا ويل خلص نجلكت طبعا بس اف ات از سكسسفول ذات مينز وي ار اون ذا رايت تراك ممكن ان نوصل للجنراليزيشن للموديفايد نيوتونيان داينامكس تمام يعني انت موافق معايا انه هو الموند وميبي اذر موديفيكيشنز سو فار فوكسد اونلي اون ذا روتيشنال كيرفز اذر ايشوز ذات نيدز تو بي كونسيدرد اند ذوز ايشوز في الحقيقه ويز دارك ماتر ايديا I would say not only consider, but maybe consider it successful somehow. Yes. However, but, uh, those are hints, not really final proof for that. Yes, yes, exactly. But uh, okay. there are some papers that dealt with uh, larger scales. Uh, some authors claimed success that they uh, were able to reproduce uh, what you observe using uh, Mondian dy dynamics. Uh, that, that exists, yeah. but as I said, it's not widely accepted. اوكي نيجي بقى لل اه قبل ما نروح للموند والكونستراكشنز والفاونديشنز بتاعها اكسبتبل ماثيماتيكالي فيزكس فيزيكالي اور نوت انت يو منشن فيو بروبلمز فور دارك ماتر حيث ان انا ام وركينج ان دارك ماتر ميبي اي تراي تو ديفند اي اجري ذير از يو نو ذيس كور 
cusp problems, there is less satellite problems and dark matter. However, those problems usually appear when we consider, uh, you know, one type of dark matter. We call it, uh, you know, uh, there is a chance to have multi components of dark matter, at least the two components of dark matter. You could have cold dark matter and warm dark matter, and then you could really uh, solve this problem of less satellites and so on. So the dark matter uh, searches is still, uh, you know, open, uh, uh, is not only cold, is not only warm, it could be kind of maximum between the two kinds. And you, you know, our visible matter, which is 5%, is made of, at least to our knowledge now, six quark and six leptons and, you know, carriers, gauge bosons and so on. All this is up to, to get 5%. So, it's not that natural to imagine that 25% of the matter of the whole universe, which we call it dark matter, consists of just one, one type of uh, matter. I'm pretty sure with future, we may have a table like the table of visible matter with non-baryonic matters, or as you mentioned, maybe dark, dark matter solution plus other solution, maybe cold and hot plus modification of gravity by MOND or by modified general relativity. Uh, I don't like MOND for some reason I will mention now, but I am open to accept uh, any kind of modified gravity that can account for, uh, for the solution. Mm -hmm. Now for the MOND itself, Mm -hmm. Well, it's ad hoc assumption. You change the, not you, uh, the guy <laughs> invented MOND, but mm -hmm. it, you did also something on, along this line. They, they yes. make a, a, ad hoc assumption where yes. force relation with acceleration is a change in with parameter mu. You make this mu function of the acceleration with this fancy A0, and you make an assumption that it, it is asymptotically equal one or equal X, as you mentioned, A over A0. This is a, this is a cooking. This is cooking to solve a problem. This is, and then when we ask, uh, can we get this formula from GR, for example, in non-relativistic limits? No. Can you prove it by somehow? Can you have it relativistic somehow? All this is no. just take this expression with this assumption about mu, you will get rotational curve flat. Okay, thank you. But, uh, okay, thank you. That's a very interesting uh, talk, what, what you mentioned. But let me cl uh, clarify one thing, uh, Dr. Shaban. Um, and this, uh, the, the, the cooking uh, you mentioned uh, concerning MOND, uh, it's not only for, about MOND, even about dark matter. And it, uh, once you want to, to uh, if you look at how uh, dark matter is distributed in galaxies, and first of all, in uh, spiral or disk galaxies, and how it is distributed in elliptical galaxies, and how it is distributed in uh, galaxy clusters. And how is it distributed on larger scales, uh, large scale structure of the universe? What they are doing, what scientists are doing, or cosmologists are doing, is that they are changing the parameters in order to get what we observe. I mean, it's not a theory that can already predicts what we're going to see. It's not like general relativity, for example, which predicted so many things that were verified uh, later on. This is one of the main, you know, one, the reasons why we think it's uh, the, the, so far the most successful theory of gravity, uh, GTR. But in the case of dark matter also, we, we look at the observations and we try to change the parameters of dark matter, how they are distributed, their maybe density the profile. Maybe the astrophysicists are doing that because they don't know the nature of the dark matter. But let me tell you, and dark matter becomes, you know, serious assumption when we discover what's called the miracle uh, uh, results that the cross section, because we consider as a dark matter and we studied the annihilation to get the relic abundance of this matter in our universe. As you said, 
how, how, how it is distributed. No, there is, a, there is a really dynamics which is studied for the dark matter from the early universe when it is dominated, how it's annihilated, and how the remnant remains with the observed quantity. So dark matter, I am not saying it is final. All the time I am saying there is, there is hints that it is a serious proposal. I am not finding Mont as a serious as the assumption or the, this is also the reason why if we find that uh, several uh, community interested in solving this problem, you will find about 80% doing dark matter and 20% or less doing yes. other stuff. Not That's because true. dark matter is giving them money to work in this field or somebody is trying to convince them because really the proposal is different. Here is some somehow concrete. We are waiting for results, but at least the structures, the uh, Boltzmann equations, the uh, evolution from the early universe till now, we are predicting the values of relic abundance as Planck and the uh, W map uh, observe it. I don't think any prediction is given by Mont so far. Let me finish with questions about your work. Uh, you made some more radical assumption, I would say. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that, that's true. The radical assumptions that you made, you changed the gravitational and the inertial mass uh, relations. It's either or. It's either or. I, either or. And also you make the gauge coupling, gravitational gauge coupling function of the R and the scale. And for me, this is, is not easy, uh, you know, uh, assumption. First of all, gravitational and uh, inertial uh, mass relations, you are going to affect the equivalence principle. Equivalence principle rely and it depends on the fact that gravitational and inertial uh, masses are the same. Yes, so yes. now, on, on, now on, you are changing it, the whole game of gravity. Yes, at, at large scales, not at uh, normal scales. I mean, how at, you at, control at, it at large scale, not at small scale, or the relation is a relation. You know, either you give me proof that it goes like this at large scale and remain. You are you are you will do something like Mondo where you have mu of x equal one and equal x. So, without any justification or how, because if you allow it to be at lower scales, you will be probably in, in a problem with, uh, uh, with equivalence principle and general <laughs> in general. Uh, for the gauge coupling, I really don't know if there's a, a consequences. I think I'm feeling, uh, <laughs> you know, not comfortable about having the gauge coupling uh, function of, I would, I would expect as a quantum field, guy uh, that it is energy dependent maybe time dependent i heard about it but x dependence or dependence i know is the i know time. i know that uh, this idea is uh, new and the radical as you said but it is it's, it belongs to the what if questions i mean i'm not saying that it is so i'm saying what if it were different huh what if it is variable and i wanted to see based on this what if question i wanted to see or we wanted to see what happens what could it uh, reproduce what we observe? That's the idea. And as I mentioned uh, earlier, that if if it does reproduce or it doesn't reproduce what we observe, then okay, we know that this assumption is not correct and it will be neglected. But if it does, that will be something interesting. Uh, if it does reproduce what we observe as an alternative or possible alternative to uh, dark matter. Uh, see, that, that, that's the basic idea. I know it's, it's rather uh, shocking to some, but, uh, uh, but we know for, for, but this for assumption sure that... remains assumption. You, you, do you think any chance to have kind of justification proof? Uh, uh, I don't know, but or it is just assumption. Well, well, it is an assumption just to see uh, the, the the compatibility of the, a bit of the result with the observations. But if you want, I always think about uh, 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 his name, uh, Mac Ernst Mac, because. What's the meaning if you think about the gravitational and uh, and uh, inertial masses? So why should there be a uh, specific inertial mass to a, to a body? I mean, this it's it's a relation. Uh, this uh, the, the value of the mass or the inertial mass should relate somehow to all the bodies in the in the universe. So if I want to give uh, a sort of qualitative, uh, not sort of explanation, but a sort of possible explanation. 
is that at larger scales, uh, uh, the, 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 the force acting between the two objects which are, which are so far away, the gravitational force starts deviating due to this very large distance because the, they are, the, these two objects are no longer at the same place in the universe. When they were at the same place, they almost had the same effects from the overall distribution of bodies in the universe. But when they are so far away from each other, then they don't have the same distribution, uh, see, a relative distribution of the objects. And that's why this equivalence, let's say, between um, uh, inertial mass and gravitational mass starts to deviate. That's one qualitative idea I have in mind. Uh, so probably, I mean, the, 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 I, I think that the most, uh, the, the highest likely, likelihood is that it's a matter of non-equivalence of the two masses rather than a changing G uh, gravitational constant. But at any case, uh, in order to be sure if this is so or not, we need more observations. We need to compare with more uh, and then to go to larger scales as well and compare with observations. So I think this work has uh, it's just, it's just the starting point, uh, Dr. Shaban. Yes, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm with you now. Thank you. Uh, sorry welcome. for many questions, <laughs> sorry. It's okay, it's, uh, it's my pleasure to be with you uh, today and uh, thank you for inviting me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if- uh, Yes, we have. We have another question. Hussein, uh, you can go ahead. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Hanna Sabat and uh, Bro Shaban. I yeah. have two questions uh, uh, about dark matter. Uh, does uh, dark matter interact with visible matter? And uh, what uh, is has uh, to do? Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Uh, will you repeat this? Does dark matter? Does interact? dark matter interact with visible uh, matter? Mm. Yes. And okay. uh, what it has to do with the forces of nature? Thanks, uh, oh. Doctor. <laughs> Fine. Uh, concerning the first question, yes, it does. Uh, presumably, only through gravity. This is the only way that dark matter affects uh, normal matter or baryonic matter is uh, by gravity. See, uh, but not you, by any other forces. Uh, any of the other three uh, forces. Uh, and as its relation to other the other forces, we don't know. I mean, we assume also one of the assumptions uh, about dark matter, the accept, one of the accepted uh, assumptions is that it does not interact much with itself. If it does, it should be uh, only by gravity. So it does not interact uh, uh, through EM electromagnetically or through uh, nuclear uh, forces, uh, et cetera. Or maybe th through a fifth force, who knows? So, you know, I read once a paper that there could be a sort of fifth force that plays, uh, name it a fifth or sixth, it doesn't matter the, the number. I mean, there is a, a specific force that acts between dark matter itself, but it, that does not affect uh, us as uh, uh, people made from normal matter. And even he, uh, th this uh, person uh, talked about uh, the possibility of the existence of the whole universe uh, made out of dark matter and with its own probably uh, stars, galaxies, uh, life, etc. So <laughs> if we, this is of course a, a rather a very hypothetical idea, but uh, physically we have no evidence that uh, dark matter uh, interacts other in a way in ways other than gravitational interaction. Uh, uh, can also interact via weak interactions. وفي الحقيقة الويك interactions هو الأهم في التفاعل الدارك ماتر مع نفسها على الأقل لأن الدارك ماتر لو 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 زادت نسبتها عن حد معين وال over close the universe فإيه اللي بيخليها to annihilate these stable particles هي ما بتتحللش هي can be only be annihilated annihilated لو هتعمل annihilation via gravity it will take very long time and it will never annihilate and it will not be consistent with the results so far that we observe so the weak interactions of the dark matter play very crucial roles خليني اقول لك كمان يا حسين ان هو we are producing dark matter في الـ في الـ large hadron colliders في ال في ال HC at CERN 
من خلال التفاعل بتاع الويك انتر اكشنز ده هتلاقي مثلا نظريات سواء سوبر سيمتري او نظريات اخرى في سبيسيفيك كانديديتس اوف دارك ماتر عارفين صفاتها عارفين خواصها عارفين انها بتتفاعل مع الدبليو بوزون والزد بوزون والبارتكلز بتاعت الويك انتر اكشن اند وي كان برودوس ذيم طيب لما برودوس ذيم وهم ستيبل بيعملوا ايه؟ بيكملوا ويترافل ويخرج بره الديتكتور بنسميهم سكيب ذا ديتكتور وبيبقى فيه ميسنج انرجي فدي السيجنالز اللي بندور عليها على الدارك ماتر في اللابز بتاعت البارتكل فيزكس ان يبقى فيه ميسنج انرجي بروفيسور شعبان هي ات واز بروفن هذا الحكي انه البارتكلز سوبر سيمتريك بارتكلز هاي ذي دو اكزيست انا على خيالي اتس نوت اونلي سوبر سيمتريك بارتكل ايم 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 توكينج ان جنرال فور اني سوبر سيمتريك بارتكل از ان اكزامبل بس هي الفكره كلها انه ان احنا وي ار تراين تو برودوس البارتكلز ديت بندور عليهم من خلال الميسنج انرجي انا دخلت بس في النقطه ديت تو شو ان اكزامبل للانتر اكشنز بتاعت الدارك ماتر الاهم عندي في الدارك ماتر انها لازم تبقى في كايند اوف انتر اكشن يخلي الانهيليشن يتم بحيث ان نحصل على النسبه الموجوده اليونيفرس كان بيحصل انهيليشنز وكرييشن بحيث ان هو كان في اكويليبريوم ثيرمال اكويليبريوم اليونيفرس توسع واكسباندد بحيث ان خلاص البارتكلز الدارك ماتر بارتكلز ما بقاش يلاقي انذر دارك ماتر بارتكل عشان يؤنيليت فالنسبه ديت ريمينز فروم ذات تايم بنسميه دي كوبلنج تايم او فريزنج تايم لغايه ناو لو ما عندناش الانتر اكشنز ديت ما عندناش الميكانيزم اللي يفسر ده كنا خلاص هنقول من بدايه الكون الى الان الدارك ماتر ربنا خلقها بهذه النسبه طبعا ربنا خلق كل حاجه بس احنا وي نيد تو اندرستاند فالافضل ايه؟ ان احنا في بدايه اليونيفرس النسبه راندوم النسبه هيوج او كتير او صغيره في برودكشن في انيليشن في ثيرمال اكويليبريوم وبعدين في ميكانيزم بنقدر نشوف بيه ازاي نوصل للنسبه اللي احنا بنميجر ناو فده كله ما يتحققش بدون الويك انتر اكشن حسين معلش يا دكتور شعبان اشمعنى انت حضرتك اخترت القوه الضعيفه فقط وما اتكلمتش ليه عن لا 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 ما هو بص الدارك ماتر ليه صفات زي ما الدكتور حنا قال ات كان نوت بي الكتريك تشارج ات كان نوت بي سترونج انتر اكتنج لان لو ليهم الانتر اكشنز دولت كنا على طول وي ميجر ذيم لو هي ليها الكترو ماجنتيك انتر اكشنز زي اي تشارج بارتكلز نقدر نقيسها لو كانت ليها سترونج انتر اكشن كانت عمل باوند ستيتس وبتاع وبقى نقدر نقيسها فهو الحاجات اللي هي compatible مع طبيعه الدارك ماتر انها هي ليها ماس فليها جرافيتيشنال انتر اكشنز وليها ده موديل ديبندنت بقى اللي انا بقول عليه انها ليها طبيعه ويك انتر اكشنز وبنلاقيه انه ضروري ومهم للغايه. شكرا دكتور شكرا على المداخلة في كمان كويستشن ويا دكتور انا انت ما ما وضحتش قوي اللي هي السؤال الاول يعني ايش هو السؤال الاول؟ اللي هو اللي هو يعني علاقة علاقة ال الماء يعني المادة المظلمة بال بالمادة المرئية يعني تقريبا يعني حاجة زي كده يعني هو بجوز الفكرة الأساسية أنه العلاقة هي من خلال الجاذبية الجرافيتي فورس اوف جرافيتي هاي وي اجري اباوت ات بروفيسور شعبان بيحكي كمان موضوع الويك انتراكشن انت ماي بلاي ا رول بالموضوع لكن مش فاهم انا سؤالك يعني بدك علاقتها باي معنى هل هي كيف توزيعها هل يعني لو توضح اخي حسين لا لا اقصده ان الماده المظلمه لا دليل عليها يعني احنا مش هي موجوده بس هي مش عارفينها هي ايه يعني نعم هي إيه علاقتها بقى في في الماده اللي هي مثلا ال او نقدر نستخدمها مثلا يخبطوا بعض في الجالكسي يا حسين في الجالكسي يا حسين الماده المظلمه اكتر بكتير خارج خارج السنتر اوف جالكسي يعني في الهيلو بره الجالكسي شويه فالدنيا الدنيا مليانه دارك ماتر اكتر من فيزيبل ماتر بيعملوا انتر اكشن كوليجنز زي ما يكون عندك سيستم اوف بارتكلز بيخبطوا في بعض في بوكس وبتاع الحاجات دي بتتحسب وبتطلع هيت وبتطلع شوك ويفز وانما عمرو الزنط شغله مينلي في الداينامكس اوف ذا جالاكسيز وده اللي انا كنت مستعين بجمله ان هو لو ما فيش دارك ماتر 
الداينامكس بتاعت الجالاكسيز السيميوليشنز اللي بيعملوها كانت هتبقى مختلفه وكانت هتبقى مش صحيحه طب بيفترضوا ايه بيفترضوا ان في ماتر زي ما انت بتقول ودارك ماتر ما بيعملوش انتر اكشنز مع بعض سيبك من الويك انتر اكشن ويك انتر اكشن ده على الفاندامنتال ليفلز لكن دلوقتي بالكميات الكبيره المهوله اللي موجوده في اليونيفرس وانت بتتكلم على غاز ولا بتتكلم على يعني سديم من الفيزبل ماتر وكده فهو ماشي في بحر من الدارك ماتر فقاعد عمال يعمل كوليجنز وبيعمل شوك ويفز وبيعمل حاجات بالشكل ده فدي نوع الانتر اكشنز اللي هو جرافيتيشنالز منه يعني نقدر نقول الماده المظلمه هي الزمكان او يعني هي اللي تحرك يعني لا انا لا لا ما لهاش دعوه هي دي ماده هي انرجي مومنتوم تنسور تي نيو نيو دي جزء من الماده زيها زي الفيزبل ماتر وبتحك والجيومتري بيتاثر بيها از جنراتيفيتي اكسبلين انت يو جاست اد الانرجي مومنتوم تنسور حته في اسمها دارك ماتر زي الفيزبل ماتر لكن ملاش يعني احنا بنعملها كانها ماده عاديه يعني ماده فيسبل يعني ماده آه مريضه هي ماده عاديه ما عدا انها ليها انتر اكشن جرافيتي وويك انتر اكشنز اونلي وحتى ويك انتر اكشن على ليفل على ليفل يعني ليفل معين مايكروسكوبيك في كمان سؤال سمحت عشان الوقت uh, we know that uh, in فيصل بارزي we know that to each energy density there is a pressure Could we look for dark matter through excess pressure in a given region of space in a lab on Earth? Wow, interesting question. Through excess pressure in a given region. Well, hey, that's a very good question, Mr. Faisal. Uh, we need to think about it. I don't know yani, if, if, if such an experiment exists, but uh, I think oh, 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 التشينج في الـ في البيهيفيرز بتاعت البارت المطر العاديه في في الهيلو بتاع الجالاكسيز اعتقد دي كلها حاجات بتدرس بس انا ما اعرفش لانهي ليفل بيقدروا يميجرز. But so far uh, all يعني measurements on uh, experiments on earth concern uh, finding the dark matter candidates uh, particles of dark matter candidates but I think there, I've never heard of an experiment to measure an excess pressure in the sense of uh, what uh, Mr. Faisal said. But that would be interesting to search about. Be another question, Muhammad. Uh, the Fermi lat uh, isotropic gamma ray background may give contribution to dark matter annihilation. <laughs> 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 لا هو 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 ده ده فعلا هنت وفي اكسس من السنتر اوف جالاكسيز في وجود لو في دارك ماتر ممكن يبقى انهيليت ويطلعوا فوتونز الفوتونز ديت بانرجي معينه ففي اكسس اوف جاما ريز هاويفر ليه مش بنحتفل وبنقول خلاص الدارك ماتر لقيناها لان في اذر سورسز ممكن يممك الجاما ريز ديت فلغايه ما نثبت بشكل يعني قاطع انه لا الاوبزرفيشن ديت راجعه لدارك ماتر مش حاجه ثانيه ما نقدرش نجزم بده لكن زي ما انت بتقول هو فعلا هنت قوي ومؤثر وبنقول ان هو ده انديكيشن على ال على ان الدارك ماتر السؤال اللي كنا بنساله بتتفاعل بتتحلل وممكن تبقى ليه في السنتر اوف جالاكسيز لان الدارك ماتر لما بتتجمع جرافيتيشنالي وتكتر شويه ترجع للوضع بتاع الايرلي يونيفرس ان ان لا انها تلاقي انذر بارتيكل تخبط فيه وتتحلل وتدي فوتونز مثلا زي ما اتجمعت في بدايه اليونيفرس دلوقتي ممكن يحصل اونلي ان ذا سنتر اوف جالاكسيز عشان كميه الدارك ماتر تسمح بالانهيليشن زي آه لكن عندنا آه other astrophysical objects ممكن تعمل السيجنالز ديت 
فما نقدرش نجزم بانها جايه من الدارك ماتر كل اللي بيشتغلوا في الدارك ماتر بيحاولوا يبروفت لكن الى ان نجد سيجنالز تبقى يونيك اوبزرفيشن للدارك ماتر وي كان وي كان نوت كلاين اوكي جميل حد رفع امين جدا نشوف امين يوسف مساء الخير انا سعيد ان انا بكون مع الدكتور شعبان ودكتور حنا انا عندي جنرال كويشن يعني طبعا في محاولات كتير لفهم وكده بس زي ما الدكتور حنا قال في الاول خالص في الانترو قال ممكن تبقى في بارتكلز جديده مش عارفينها يعني بمعنى احنا عارفين الستاندرد موديل والتيبل بتاع الستاندرد موديل اللي, بي... اللي بيوصف كل حاجه في الكون اللي هو الخمسه في الميه اللي بيوصف الخمسه في الميه في الميه بالكون هل محاولات الكشف او محاولات الاستكشاف ما هو الدارك ماتر هل ممكن ت... 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 توجد لنا مثلا نيو نيو فيزكس يعني ثوره جديده في الفيزياء نيو بارتيكلز احنا مش عارفين عنها حاجه مثلا اه ذاتس ا فيري جود كويستشن يعني يعني انه بجوز هاي واحدة من الشغلات اللي حكيت هي بجوز مشكلة فلسفية اللي انتبهتوا انه يعني إذا كان طبعا بدناش نحكي هذا عن دارك انرجي خلينا نحكي عن 25% تقريبا أو 22% اللي بتشكل دارك ماتر إذا كان عندها ديفرنت لوز ذان وات وي هاف يعني فبجوز هاي على فكرة ممكن تفسر لنا إنه إحنا وي ميك أب بارت أوف ذا سيم يونيفرس يعني دارك ماتر أند نورمال ماتر We are part of the same universe, and we have problems of unification. Sheikh Dr. Shaban, we have a problem of the four forces of nature, and we have a problem of incompatibility between quantum mechanics and general relativity, etc. So maybe you know, there is a missing component. Like if dark matter does exist, and it has certain other laws or forces of interaction than what we know. So maybe this is the missing link. That's why we weren't successful so far to get a final theory of physics. So what do you think, uh, Dr. Shaban, the high level? لا أنا أنا أكيد أي الكلام ده لأن أنا أساساً شغلي beyond the standard model uh, mainly uh, motivated by uh, arguments زي like dark matter. بس اللي انا عايز اكد عليه انه اه دايما المحاوله اجابه سؤال في الفيزياء بتغير بتغير الصوره بتغير ملامح الخريطه الفيزيائيه اللي احنا كنا بنبقى عارفينها فلو اكتشفنا دارك ماتر اعتقد الدنيا هتفرق هيبقى في نيو بارتكلز ممكن يبقى في نيو انتر اكشنز في حاجه دلوقتي زي ما الدكتور حنا قال ممكن يبقى بيسموها فيفث فورس اتس اي يو وان باي ذا واي فيفث فورس او اكسترا فورسز ده ناتشر ناتشرال جدا في بيوند ستاندرد موديل ما عندنا ثلاثه فورسز بلس جرافيتي ممكن يكون عندنا اكسترا فورسز مختلفه عن الويك انتر اكشن جاست سمبل يو وان بنسميها يو وان برايم ممكن تبقى دي اكسترا فورس بنسميه دارك فوتون ده اكسترا type of uh, interactions فكل الدنيا يعني open كل الابواب open لكل حاجه بس زي ما بقول ان هي الفيزياء دايما معودانا ان احنا لما بنحاول نفهم ونجاوب على سؤال ممكن نكتشف يعني حاجات كتيره بتاخدنا لنقطه ابعد وده وده يعني ده الجميل في الموضوع ربما احنا ما نلحقوش في جن بس انتوا لو اشتغلتوا ان شاء الله تقدروا تشوفوا الصوره الجديده اللي هتبقى عليها الفيزياء حتى لو ما فيش دارك ماتر كمطر وعملنا موديفيكيشن للجرافيتي سواء عن طريق جي ار او عن طريق الموديفاينج نيوتن نيوتونيان ميكانكس ما فيش حاجة هتتعمل أي حاجة يعني بـ بـ أي سوليوشن بيطلع عشان تو جاست أدابت وتو سولف سبيسيفيك بروبلم من غير ما يبقى في يعني ليه تأثير آخر في أعرف إن ده يعني زي ما كنت بقول شوية من شوية إز فاين تيونينج كوكينج إز جاست نو بادي ويل أكسبت يو وونت تو اكسبلين يعني نسبة من الميسنج ريليك اباندنس موجودة في اليونيفرس بتفسرها بإيه؟ تفسرها بموديفايد جرافيتي عظيم بس تفسرها بموديفايد جرافيتي بس يو هاف تو بريدكت سمثينج إلس فروم يور موديفيكيشن يو هاف تو تيك أس 
further than the usual uh, gravity. But also, I will just adjust the parameters to solve this, and that's it. More fitting, a lot. I mean, always, we don't have much. يعني زي الـ QCD quantum 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 chromodynamics at low energy ما عندناش theory وعندنا fitting حد قال ان احنا فاهمين حاجة عندنا lattice QCD بيقعد يعمل computationals ويطلع نتائج وبتاع حد قال احنا فاهمين اي حاجة في الـ quantum chromodynamics لازم نفهم ولازم يبقى في predictions يحلل المشكلة ويديني طريق لما هو يعني ما بعد المشكلة فأنا I'm pretty sure تفقلوا يعني امشي وراء أي problems حقيقية سواء dark matter, dark energy دولة لي في observation بتأيدهم في proposals للسوليوشن ده أو ده أو ده take any proposal بس be critic وحاول تفهم الموضوع ممكن يبقى رايح على فين و For sure, when the problem will be solved, we will have better understanding in physics. Beyond the standard model, this is my my game and my goal. Like, and I am open. I am doing gravity, and I wish also gravity we can understand it better than what we understand right now. Okay. We have Dr. Hanna. There is one who is just coming to the end. Last question. في محمود خطيب كان اعتقد يعطيكم العافيه الله الله يعافيك اه محمود خطيب يعطيك العافيه دكتور حنا الله يعافيك ويعطيك العافيه دكتور تعبان دكتور حنا بس بالبدايه بدي اسالك اذا اليوم في حيكون اي ايفنت بالجمعيه آه اليوم راح يكون عندنا محاضره عن ال... في مركز هاي الثقافي عاملينها الساعه 6 ونص راح تكون عن موضوع التقويم والاشياء هاي يعني مجموعه محاضرين تمام ان شاء الله راح يحضر دكتور ماشي سوري احنا خرجنا عن الموضوع المحاضره ادينا ادينا اعلنا عن الدكتور دكتور كنت امبارح عم بقابل مع الدكتور شعبان بخصوص انتين شيب كلها بيرسونال يا محمود محمود خلي خلي بالضبط يعني ليتر لو في اسئله لو في سؤال في موضوع المحاضره جو اهيد دايركت بالضبط اول سؤال كنت حاب اساله اللي هو إذا في أي علاقة بين الدارك ماتر والدارك انرجي يعني ممكن حد يكون عم بيبحث بالدارك انرجي وهو يتوصل حلول أو نظريات ممكن تفيده بالدارك ماتر هذا السؤال الأول السؤال الثاني إحنا كيف تأكدنا إنه الدارك ماتر هي مش يعني كواكب يعني غير لامعة أو نعم نعم هاي آه هاي هاي لا هاي توزروا رولد أوت من البداية يعني باختصار ما بد يعني ما بتكفي كميات انك تحط كميات زي هيك وبدك اول شيء بدها تتفاعل بطرق ثانيه مثلا منها الامتصاص الاشعه ومنها انعكاس وكل الامور اللي هي معروفه في النورمال ماتر او البايونيك ماتر لازم تتفاعل من خلالها اما احنا الكومبوننت اللي هو عم بياثر على توزيع وحركه النجوم والمجرات والى اخره هو كومبوننت غير مرئي هاي النقطه يعني لا ما بت... لا it does not emit or absorb or or, or كل هاي الحكي the only way it affects uh, normal matter is uh, by gravity في هاي النقطة عشان هيك they had to assume it is non baryonic in nature يعني طبيعته مش من المادة البريونية العادية شايف كيف وحتى بجوز أنا ذكرت في المحاضرة ال compact objects برضو ما بتصلح إلها مش بتسوي مشاكل حتى يعني لو حاولت تفترض إنه هاي دارك ماتر عبارة عن أجسام منهارة أجرام منهارة زي نجوم بنهاية حياتها إلى آخره برضو هاي راح تزيد من مشاكل تانية من ضمنها الجرافيتيشن لانسينج وإلى آخره وهذا إشي ما عم نشوفه رصديا سو so, يعني دارك ماتر يا ما بدها تكون مادة إكزوتيك لسه ما مش عارفين شو طبيعتها أو أنذر سوليوشن اللي هو الألترناتيف سوليوشن حكينا عنه هو تو موديفاي داينامكس وبضل برضو احتمالية أن يكون بوث توجذر برضو قائمة زي هذا البحث أشرت له آخر إشي بحكي عن سوبر فلويديتي واللي متحمسين له جدا طبعا سابين هوسنفلدر اللي هي فيزيائيه نظريه متحمسه جدا لهذا السوليوشن لمشكله الدارك ماتر اما الدارك ماتر والدارك انرجي ده تشابه اسماء اه ما فيش ما فيش ما فيش علاقه غير انه تشابه اسماء ده دارك وده دارك فيعني الناس بتربطهم ببعض لكن اليوم 
ديفرنت اوريجن تماما مختلفين واحد نورمال ماتر زي ما كنا بنقول بريشر بتاعه بوزيتيف بيعمل على اتراكتيف يعني الانتر اكشنز الجرافيتيشنال فورسز بتاعه بتاتراكت البارتكلز وكده الثاني ريبالسيف فورس ف يعني شغال عكسه خالص ده بيسبب كونتراكشن لليونيفرس والثاني بيسبب اكسبانشن لليونيفرس فما فيش اي علاقه تجمع دارك ماتر مع دارك انرجي غير تشابه الاسماء لكن لو في اندر لاين ثيري تفسر لنا الاثنين يعني بس خلينا ستيب باي ستيب خلينا واحده واحده حضرتك شعبان ممكن الطاقه المظلمه هل هي بتعمل ضد الجاذبيه ولا ايه على هي بتعمل مع الجاذبيه بس بطريقه زي ما بقول ريبالسيف هو الريبالسيف ديت جاذبيه برضه بس هو احنا عاده الجاذبيه احنا مسمينا عشان كده بيسموها الترجمه العربي الدقيقه مش جاذبيه تثاقل فتثاقل جرافيتيشنال فممكن يبقى عندك بوزيتيف جرافيتيشنال فورس ونيجاتيف جرافيتيشنال فورس او يعني اتراكتيف وريبالسيف فهي بتزق لبره مش بتجمع للسنتر نعم بالظبط في شيء برضه بجوز له علاقه بالحكي مش في الدارك ماتر بس في طلع بيبر من كم سنه ناسي هذا اسم الاوثر بيحكي انه لو احنا واحده من البيسك اسامبشنز بالكوزمولوجي بالمودرن كوزمولوجي انه ذا يونيفرس از ايزوتروبيك والى اخره اذا تخلينا عن شرط الايزوتروبي وادخلنا بعين الاعتبار انه في عندنا نوع من اللامبنس وتوزيع مش ايزوتروبيك في اللارج سكيل فممكن انه ال ال هذا التسارع تاع الجالكسيز ذات واز اوبزرف باك ان 1998 ممكن انه يكون ناتج عن هذا النون هوموجينيتي او نون يعني ايزوتروبي اوف ذا يونيفرس وبالتالي اتس افيك افكت يعني مش ترو uh, افكت هاي بيبر نشرت من فتره يعني بعرف اذا مرت عليك دكتور بس خليني اتذكر ميبي بس الهوموجينيتي والايزوتروبي از يعني ميجرد ات لارج سكيل تو فيري 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 جود زي ما حد بيقول سامي يقول لي انا عايز اكسر لورنس او بون كري ان فارينس اقول له اوكي بس يعني اتس اتس فيري ديفيكولت تو اكسبت بس هو نو دول الهبيده يا برو دول الهبيده نعم لا لا هي دول هبيده يعني لا 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 بيبر محترمه هي يعني لا لا مش هبيده هو اسامبشن بس يعني الكونسترينتس بيبقى وبعدين يا سيدي تسميها زي ما انت عايز تسميها في ناس بتخلي يعني بتجرب بتقول انا لو لو اسيومد ذيس هو المشكله بقى لو في اوبزرفيشنز حقيقي وفي كونسترينت على ال any uh, يعني uh, violation of the isotropy او uh, او homogeneity uh, يعني هو لازم يحققه لو بيلعب وزن الفطره ده وزن السمول ايرور ده هيز ويلكم تو اكسبلين اللي هو عايز يكسبلين بيانكي يونيفرسز دكتور ابيك ريسيرش يعني في الليترشر على البيانكي يونيفرسز ذي ار نوت ايزوتروبيك انا بتكلم عن اوبزرفيشن يا عمار هل ده كونسيستنت ويز ذا اوبزرفيشن لان انا اعرف ان في كونسترين قويه جدا على موضوع ان هو تو هاف ان ايزوتروبي ذيس از اي دونت نو 10 تو ماينس سمثينج يعني ف اي دونت نو اي دونت نو سم اوف ذيس بيانكي يونيفرسز سم اوف ذيس بيانكي يونيفرسز المتريك بتاعها كونسيستنت يعني ات كان مش المتريك انا ما بتكلمش على المتريك انا بتكلم على الاوبزرفيشن كان اوفركم ذا ذا كونسترين فروم ذا اوبزرفيشن لغايه لغايه القرن اللي فات كانوا بيشتغلوا بيها بس الريسنت ليترشر ما بشوفش الحاجات دي بصراحه فانه عشان 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 ف بس بس زي ما بقول يعني زي ما احنا بنتكلم كده اني سوليوشن كود كود وورك از ويلكم بروفايدد انه يعني يحترم الكونسترينت اللي موجوده يحترم عقولنا يعمل يعني ماثيماتيكال بروف للاسامبشنز اللي بتستخدم وبعد كده النتائج بنتشكل يعني وي ار نوت فاناتيك لسوليوشن عن الاخر بغير ان هو بيحقق مجموعه اللي هي اي فيزياء بتعتمد عليها ان هي تكون بتتفق مع التجربه وليها اي ريجوس ماثيماتيكال فاونديشن هوب يعني ذيس ويل بي جريت السلام عليكم دكتور شعبان عليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته من ناحيه الاوبجيكتيف احنا بنتكلم مثلا دلوقتي في فيرمات في ايزوتروبي باك جراوند حتى في شغلنا دايما نعمل سبستراكشن يعني كون ان احنا شايفين ايزوتروبي 
فده ويل كانديديت اللي هي سوبس من الدارك ماتر مثلا هل هل دي ليه علاقه بالسؤال اللي فات؟ انا ما فهمتش الكومنتس بتاعتك اصلا فممكن بس بتقصد ات لو سكيل ولا ات لارج سكيل؟ لا ام سو ام سو يعني اسف انا بس يعني ايه كان السؤال اللي فات مني اللي فات بس انا سمعت الاوبزرفيشن هل في ايزوتروبيك اوبزرفيشن فانا بتكلم على الجاما ري في الفيرميلات في آه دلوقتي آه في الجاما ري سكاي اتس ايزوتروبيك باك جراوند ودايما في في الشغل بتاع فيرميلات حتى هو طبعا ما فيش تفسير قوي للباك جراوند دي لان في كانديديت لكذا فيزيكال بروسس او سورس يعني منها منها الدارك ماتر اتسل ان الدارك ماتر انيليشن بيدي الجاما ري سيجنال وهنا ممكن اضيف حاجه صغيره ان احنا مثلا في الـ في الـ في السيرش للجاما ري الجاما ري ماتر انيليشن في شغل على زي ما حضرتك ذكرت في الجالاكتيك سنتر بتاع دان هوفر اول ما ابتدى بيه وبداوا فعلا يكملوا الشغل ده في كذا سنتر او طبيبه طلعت لكن ما فيش فاينل جروب لغايه دلوقتي بالنسبه للكلاستر هل احنا ممكن نعمل اوبزرفيشن الكلاستر في الجامري ونعمل ماسكنج للسورسز ونعمل حاجه زي ايه زي ستاكنج كده فده ممكن يزود شويه من من الاستاتستكس بتاعه بتاعه السيجنال او بتاعه الاوبزرفيشن اتمنى ذلك انا ثوريتيشن فما اعرفش بس يعني اتمنى ان هو يبقى في دايما يعني بروف عشان يساعدونا نعرف نفكر في انهي دايركشن فانا اعتقد كل اللي انت بتقوله ده انا ما اعرفش كمان بيقيسوا الايزوتروبي على اللارج سكيل ازاي اكيد من خلال باك جراوندز اه وكده لكن انا يعني مش خبير في في الجزء العملي ده تمام اوكي شكرا لحضرتك Uh, the Faisal Barzi, what if we include angular momentum for the universe? Hmm. This question uh, has been tackled before, you know, but uh, I think that there is no evidence that there is a sort of angular momentum for the universe. We know that it's expanding uh, radially, but uh, I think there is no evidence. Uh, we may perform some theoretical studies about this, but uh, I think observationally, there is no evidence that uh, There is an angular component or angular momentum uh, for the universe uh, as a whole. What do you think, Dr. Saban? I'm not sure. The angular momentum is not going to change anything. Macroscopically zero should be the average. No, no, no. There is a rotating universe, something like this. Like, like طبيعه يعني مش فاهم يعني مثلا الجرافيشنال ويفز كود بي ديفرنت لو احنا وي كونسيدر انجلر ميتريك ويز انجلر بلس اي دونت نو زي زي عمرنا بنقول الماكروسكوبيك ليست في زيرو Anyway, احنا بنشكر الجماعه تفاعلوا معاك اكتر من من اللازم وعطلوك اكتر من ساعه بعد المحاضره ف شكرا جزيلا يا دكتور حمد شكرا لك الموضوع واضح ان الموضوع بيلاقي يعني في ناس من مصر والاردن انترستد بيه فده شيء السؤال قبل ما تنهي يا دكتور شعبان ممكن ولا خلاص كده؟ نعم أنا كنت عاوز أسأل سؤال قبل ما تنهوا يعني ولا خلاص كده لو سؤال أمين. قصير مكير هو سؤال عميق شوية اللي هو علاقة الأكوان المتعددة أو المالتي يونيفيرس ده, ده سؤال أكوان متعددة والدارك مطر والدارك انرجي وأعملهم ضربهم في الخلاط يطلع يطلع المستقبل كله إن شاء الله لا ده سؤال ده سؤال مش بسيط بالدمخاطر طيب خلاص هو احنا احنا عارفين نحل كلاسيكال دارك ماتر عشان نروح لكوانتم كوزمولوجي وكوانتم جرافيتي عشان نفهم اكوان متعدده مش كله مع بعضه يا 
سين انت عارف احنا دايما في الفيزياء بنحاول نحل المسائل البسيطه او ندرب فيها نفسنا ونروح لحاجه اصعب سنه فما تدخل ما تخبطناش على طول كده في الاكوان المتعدده <تصفيق> على فكره ده في كتاب حضرتك برضو يعني من الكتاب الجديد بتاع حضرتك يا دكتور انا جبت سيره اكوان متعدده نفر لا مش اكوان متعدده دارك ماتر واتكلمت عنها آه 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 آه. طيب شكرا جزيلا يا حسين شكرا جزيلا يا جماعه شرفتونا يعطيكم العافيه و... عمار هتقفل ولا انا خلاص قفلت؟ انا اللي انا اللي انا دكتور ده هو الهوست انا الهوست اللي خلاص تذكر مع السلامه يلا باي باي سلام